Hi, I'm Valeria Popov. I reversed my gestational diabetes, got off insulin, lost weight and sustained my weight loss. I got rid of constant constipation and my allergies and I did it by transitioning to a plant-based exclusively whole food lifestyle. And I wanna show you how you can get fit and healthy too. So today I am going to show you how I ferment my vegetables. And it's a very interesting process and it doesn't take much time or energy. Um, and it's very, very beneficial for our gut. Our gut connects to our brain. So the whole body gets benefited by uh, fermented vegetables. And I don't do pickled vegetables, I do fermented vegetables. And I fermented for 21, 30 days. Uh, why I do it? Because on 24th day, there is a bacteria, I, I don't remember the name, uh, I researched that probably two and a half, three years ago, and I I was full of that information, but I forgot the name of the bacteria, but it's been, uh, it usually uh, been born on 24th day, and you wanna give four or five days for it to mature, and then you can transfer um, your fermented food to the fridge, and it's gonna be living. So it's a live food. Um, so basically, what are you gonna need it's your vegetables. I use cabbage, I use carrots, and I use uh, Granny Smith um, apples. I also use a little bit of salt, mustard seeds, and caraway seeds. So the salt, sometimes I don't use salt. If I do have a leftover juice from my previous batch of fermentation, then I use that. If I don't, I use a little bit of salt. Um, if you guys want the exact measurement for everything and all my recipes, please join my email list. You can find the link in the description. Um, that's where people get all the information. So I'm going to show you two things also that you're gonna need. It's your fermented pot, I have two. I'm using the 10 liter right now and I also have a five liter here. So it's basically a ceramic um, ferment, a fermented pot and it has a lid and then it has the weights. So the weights are basically when you put everything in, you put the weights, there. those are pretty heavy, so you put the weights on and then you put the lid on. The lid has a little hole in here. So this is for the fermented gases to kind of escape. Um, and the lining here is actually created, it's a ceramic lining that it doesn't really smell. But so this lead is basically for the fermented gases to escape uh, and keep the fermentation going. Um, also, I'm gonna show you how, what do we do after we put everything in. So I'm gonna put that on the side. So here is my 10 liters and I already, so this is gonna be my last layer that I'm gonna do. I put everything in layers. So then I'm going, I'm gonna show you how much I have in there already. So um, I'm just gonna keep going and I'm gonna show you how I do it. And you're gonna need this, um, I think it's a pounder, uh, something that, some people like um, to cut their, um, uh, to cut their cabbage thin and I try to do it thin and then I try to do it in the bigger pieces. I like the bigger pieces better because it's just, um, it gets more crunchy. Um, when, so uh, the pounders here kind of like put everything together but also express those like juices out of the cabbage. Some people like to actually do it with their hands so they cut them very thin and then they massage the cabbage a lot. So I kind of skipped that process uh, because I did it both ways and I didn't really see the difference. Uh, but I like the chunks, so when I, I, I wanna crunch on it, I wanna like bite on it, so when it's done. So I'm going to, so uh, this is my, you ha I have my layer of cabbage already, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the layer of the last layer of uh, grated carrots. When you grate your carrots, you wanna use the bigger holes of your grater. Um, I used um, 
my food processor to do that and it only I created nine um, big carrots and it took me like 25 seconds so use your uh, food processor if you have one or you can just use your hand grater uh, but use the largest hole for both of the uh, gadgets so that goes in I'm going to spread it evenly here we go it goes here I'm gonna cut my last two Granny Smith apples. So, and you do it in the, in big chunks. So I would do like probably quarters, but since I am kind of like cutting it weirdly, that's like a bigger pieces that you want to put in. So it's like bigger. So, and you spread it evenly. The last apple that I'm going to put in. The apples are just, my kids and I actually, the mo the, we love apples in those fermentations the most. And um, after it's done, after 30 days, when you eat the fermented um, vegetables, they are bubbly. Like they're actually kind of like a tindy, like it's so cool. And you know that you're eating the best food. It's a live food. Um, so that's the apples went in. Now I'm going to take my chunks of cabbage and kind of break them apart a little bit and I put them there. There we go. There we go. Just a bit more and then I'm going to put my spices on and and then put more cabbage and more spices there we go. so it has so, a little bit of salt it has um caraway seeds and mustard seeds you can see the mixture you kind of sprinkle it The last layer, I just love fermented food. It's just, it brings, I love to put it in my, on my soups, in my soups. Um, I love to put them uh, on anything. I mean, I do not cook my soups with it because you don't want to kill that pressure, pressure bacteria that is in there but you can definitely put them on when you, um, on like a warm or hot soup. So, all right, that's in. I am going to put the rest of my spices on it. There we go. And now it's your work time, work, <laughs> workout time. So you want to actually really go in cabbage uh, started to release those juices and steam like being started to be wet You, you can you can be just so creative you can try different vegetables you can try different spices um, but I love cabbage the combination of cabbage carrot and um, the green apples I think for me it's the best we tried Napa cabbage um, I liked it too but sometimes it's like different from batch to batch sometimes it gets a little soggy um, and I suspect that 
it probably was not enough salt, uh, which I don't mind. I don't, uh, fermentation for me, not only for taste, but mostly for our gut health and the, all the benefits that well, we get uh, when we ferment food. So I always look at it that way. So I'm gonna add this a bit more. There you go. So, and now, I'm going to put my weights inside. So I'm going to insert them inside and put them right on top of the cabbage. Okay. Go. I'm going to press on it a bit more. I'm going to show you how it looks like actually. I'm going to put in the weights and let me move you guys. There we go. All right. So here it is. So the weights are in and that's the water. It's probably an inch above the um, surface area. All right. I'm going to show you the rest of the process. Go. All right. So now, basically, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put, put my, um, sorry, put my lid on it. So here's the hole here. This, like this big one, has two holes, probably because of the size. So I'm gonna put it on. And what I'm gonna do now, and what are you, you gonna be doing every day, is to putting water inside of this uh, ridge here. So you want to make sure that it's never dry because if it's dry too much, it means that this hole is exposed. Uh, so you don't want this hole to be exposed and get the air in. Um, so you always want those holes to be covered with water in that bridge here because if the water, if the air gets in, it kind of disturbs the fermentation um, and the gases from that hole kind of it, it pushes up uh, through this water, and you'll you'll notice and you'll hear those like sounds like boop boop all this kind of sounds. So the fermentation gases can escape through that layer of water. So now I'm going to put my water in and put put your put your fermentation pot somewhere where you can see it first thing in the morning or i usually put it like over there uh that corner because that's where i um prep my kids breakfast uh, so in the morning so i was like oh it's a little low in water so i can add and you will be able to see actually it's so interesting um how the um so here it's full of water so my ring is full of water. I don't know if you, if you, if you can see it. Um, but I, what I wanted to tell you that uh, it's affected by low and high tides. You'll be able, so here's the water. So it's right to the top. So all the holes are under the water. Um, so yeah, it's actually, it's actually interesting how the amount of water will be um, determined by a high or a low tide, which is so crazy. Uh, but it is what it is so keep adding water and in 29 30 days you can open it what how I store it I store it in the big container so you can put in a smaller container but make sure when it take when you take your fermented uh, vegetables out of the container you put it in uh, out of the fermented pot put it in a container and put the liquid on top of it because if it's gonna be exposed to air it's gonna be fine for just a couple of days and after that it just starts to mold and um, the bacteria keeps like dying so you want to keep it under the juices um, and then it's it's it, it keeps living it's still being alive for probably a good month for sure if, if it's under the um, the actual juices all right, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed it and like the video, subscribe to my channel. And if you're not on my email list and you want to know all the measurements, um, 
for the recipes and to wanna, I do a lot of interviews uh, with other, uh, with uh, lots of experts. So yeah, please join my email list and you'll find the link for it in the descriptions. And also in the descriptions, you're gonna find the link to this, um, to the pots like this for, for the fermentation and to those ponders. All right guys, bye.